Ah, ah, my hair's a mess. My hair is a mess. Hello! I'm gonna talk about sloths for a bit. You may know sloths for being the fourth of the seven deadly sins, right behind greed, lust, and posting status updates on LinkedIn. Sloths are some of the most unusual creatures in the animal kingdom, and despite previously being quite overbearing and vicious, are now relatively small, slow moving, and lovable. Ooh. They're also shrouded in currently unresolved mystery. Uh, for instance, we know that sloths are excellent swimmers and can hold their breath for 40 minutes, but we don't know how this originated. We know that sloths will strangely, in a very civilized manner, climb down to the forest floor to use the bathroom, but we don't know why. We know that they hire sloths at the DMV in Zootopia, but we don't know how they use the touch screens with just their claws. Today, we're gonna talk about sloth necks and why they're important to both biologists and vampire sloths. You see, despite a huge amount of variance in neck size between mammals, almost all mammals have the exact same number of neck vertebrae, sometimes known as cervical vertebrae, although they're not always, for reasons we'll get onto later. Uh, and that number is seven. There are seven neck vertebrae in most cows, seven large neck vertebrae in most giraffes, and seven compressed, hunched over neck vertebrae in most humans watching this. This is in complete contrast to almost all other vertebrate classes. Birds have anywhere from 13 to 25 neck vertebrae, and snakes alone have been debated to have anywhere from 2 to 18 neck vertebrae. The most commonly held belief as to why we see this is due to the potential pleiotropic effects mammals might suffer from changing their number of neck vertebrae, i.e. the potential effects that mutating the genes responsible for the neck might have on the rest of the body. For instance, we see a strong correlation between newborn humans born with, with cervical ribs, i.e. small ribs in your neck rather than your, your chest or thorax, and rates of cancer and stillbirth. Neck vertebrae are also involved in the development of the mammalian breathing system, with the cells which go on to form the diaphragm during early development originating in the neck. In addition, the phrenic nerve, the nerve responsible for controlling the diaphragm, and for also causing hiccups, incidentally, <laughs> connects it to the neck vertebrae, meaning that the variation in neck vertebrae could affect diaphragm motor control. And that would be bad, as it would impair your breathing. However, there are two mammals which ignore all these potential dangers. The first being manatees, and the second being our current topic of conversation and nature's bad boys, sloths. Instead of seven neck vertebrae like almost all other mammals, two-toed sloths have anywhere from five to eight neck vertebrae, and three-toed sloths have anywhere from eight to ten. Why is this exactly? Well, we don't really know. And realistically, the sloths probably don't know either, so no one knows. But there are theories though, with the most prominent being based on what sloths are known for, that they're really, really slow. Specifically, their metabolism is really, really slow. Having such a low metabolism may reduce the risk of dangerous pleiotropic effects such as developing cancer, allowing sloths the freedom to evolve greater or fewer neck vertebrae without significant consequences. In support of this, we see that in other classes with greater variance in neck vertebrae, such as birds and reptiles, there is a much lower rate of cancer. But much like the magazine Big Issue, if it published this theory, there are big issues with this theory. With ancient mammals and mammalia forms, i.e. The, the things just before mammals, such as Morganucodon, which lived around 200 million years ago at the end of the Triassic period, and looks a lot like a, like a, like a big rat, uh, or Triconodon, which lived 160 million years ago in the Jurassic, and looks a, looks a lot like a, like, like a big rat, we know that these creatures had a much lower level of metabolism than modern day mammals. So we would expect a much greater variance in the number of neck vertebrae, after all, a low metabolism seems to allow for this. Except, we don't see this. Instead, we see the same modern day consistency. Which means there are most likely some other constraints that we don't yet know about. Interestingly though, these extra neck vertebrae in three-toed sloths, which we would typically refer to as, as cervical vertebrae, aren't actually. They're, they're thoracic or, or chest vertebrae, which have changed to become part of the neck. The top few thoracic vertebrae have lost their ribs, and the boundary between the neck and the chest has shifted further down the sloth spine, or up the spine for, for two-toed sloths, along with the rest of the sloth's limbs. They, they've all moved up or down as well. There are many different reasons as to why we see this, but, but essentially, thoracic vertebrae ossify or, or turn into bone at a different time in development compared to cervical vertebrae. And when looking at this development in a sloth, we see that these extra vertebrae develop at a different time compared to the rest of the neck, but at the same time as the chest. For instance, if we look at a sloth with, with 10 vertebrae in its neck, 
We see the first seven neck vertebrae develop when cervical vertebrae usually develop, and the eighth, ninth, and tenth vertebrae develop at the same time as the thoracic vertebrae. So in a sense, these extra vertebrae are thoracic vertebrae, but they simply lost their ribs and are no longer part of the chest, but are now part of the neck. So while a sloth does have a unique amount of neck vertebrae, it still shares the same amount of cervical vertebrae as all other mammals, that number being seven. And I hope you can one day use this information to either impress your friends, befriend the sloth, or, or do above average in a pub quiz. Uh, thank you. Okay, you know what, let's... Uh, I'm good with this. Alright, job well done. Um, what else? Oh, also, I'm reviving this channel, so uh, for those of you who are still here, uh, there'll be more. And for those of you who just want, who want to join, subscribe, because I'm going to talk about science and animals and stuff. Because I'm going to use my degree somehow, and I, I like them, because everyone likes animals. What's your favourite animal? Mine is uh, a tuna. Oh!